Beatles. Hi, everybody. This is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hello everyone, this is Steve Marinucci welcoming you to another Beatles News Briefs. And it's been a while, and uh, we hope that uh, you're fine on your end, and we are too, because we're, we're here. Um, we thought we would, on this return show, take a look at three recent new releases by the solo Beatles. One by Ringo, one by Paul, and one by John. Let's start with Ringo's Zoom In, which was recorded between April and October of last year and came out in December. Uh, he released uh, Here's to the Nights, head of the five-track EP, and there's no surprise there since it featured a wealth of guest stars, including some guy named Paul McCartney. Um, it's a nice ballad, and we can see why he spotlighted it because of all the named guest stars. Um, besides Paul, there's Joe Walsh, Cheryl Crow, Dave Grohl, Lenny Kravitz, Ben Harpers, and Steve Lukather, among others. And s starting with an upbeat song has been Ringo's formula on his recent albums, and this time he didn't. Uh, this is a ballad. Um, but uh, as usual, uh, his vocals sound fantastic. How does he do it for... How old is he now? Uh, and you can't miss... Paul McCartney shouting in on the backing vocals uh, there, uh, making his uh, voice known. Uh, Zoom In, Zoom Out, which kind of is the title of the EP Zoom In, um, is incredible. And I am surprised, actually, that that didn't get more of the spotlight that it, that it did. Robbie Krieger is on guitar uh, if you can't tell, Doors fans. And he just sounds superb. Uh, this track is like The Beatles Meets the Doors, uh, which is uh, something that never happened, but boy, uh, after hearing this, you wish it could have. Um, the song is, is great. It also features Ben Montana, uh, Tench on keyboards and Amy Keys on and Wendy Wagner with some nice work on background vocals. Uh, the next song, Teach Me to Tango, is a party rocker with some nice guitar work, though it's not as um, distinguished. Distinguished is probably the wrong word. Uh, it's probably not as, uh, as, you know, as interesting as the other two tracks. Um, Waiting for the Tide to Turn is a uh, very soulful song, not surprising since Nathan East is on bass, and it's a nice ode to reggae, which you don't hear Ringo do very often. He's talked about his love of reggae in the past. Um, the final song, Not Enough Love in the World, is uh, Ringo's trademark to Peace and Love, which he's been doing all along. Um, all in all, this is a nice set that shows Ringo is keeping his music alive and well. It'll be interesting to see what he takes when he goes back out on the road. Um, and I think the song Zoom In, Zoom Out is destined to be a Ringo classic. Okay, um, next we're going to talk about Paul McCartney's McCartney 3. And for all the upbeat and unity of Ringo Zoom In, McCartney 3 just doesn't have the same cohesiveness. McCartney 1, of course, was fantastic. It was the first McCartney solo album. It came out of the blue. It was rough around the edges, but it was just tremendous. McCartney 2 was more of an experiment that got mixed reviews, although it, it wasn't, you know, wasn't bad. Uh, McCartney 3 continues to be a rough edge type of thing, and it's basically continuing what he started on Egypt Station, which was a disappointment to us because it went in so many directions. The roughness of Egypt Station is multiplied here, and the vocals just don't sound better for it. Um, for example, Long Tail Winter Bird, which opens the album, should have finished it, not started it. Um, too many of the songs, like Sliding and Deep, Deep, 
feeling sound unfinished and like demos. But, you know, maybe that's the point. Considering the circumstances it was made under, maybe some allowances should be made. And, you know, we're going to acknowledge that. So we'll consider McCarty 3 a side project. We'll look forward to the next one. But it's interesting that Paul has gotten other musicians to redo tracks for Reimagined, which has just come out so soon after McCartney 3 has been released. Does Reimagined make the songs more legitimate? Hmm. Somewhat. We've only heard a little of it, but it's too bad more of the flavor of Reimagined didn't happen with McCartney 3. And finally, there's the John Lennon Plastic Ono Band Ultimate Collection, a great look back at one of the best solo albums by a former Beatle. I personally wore out my first vinyl copy of this thing back in the day, and it's funny to read the notes by Paul Hicks, who did some of the remixing on the album, who also wore his out, and I think that's, it said, I think uh, a lot of people did. The, the set is respectful to the original album with outtakes, raw studio mixes, evolution mixes, demos, and jams, which was Yoko's Wish. She did she had a, a big say, of course, in how this thing was put together. As with previous sets, there are some neat little surprises in the outtakes, but my wish is that the outtakes of each song were put back to back and not separated as they are. I think that would have made a better listening experience. Still, this album was such a tremendous work when it came out, and it's nice to see the additional tracks released to the public for the first time. The set, as a bonus somewhat, also includes the complete tracks of the Yoko Ono Plastic Ono Band album, which has never really gotten the attention that it deserves, probably because it's Yoko, and Yoko's stuff never does. But if you're a Yoko fan, this is one of her best albums, and I'm glad to see them add that onto the John Lennon stuff. It's great. So, anyway, it's a short and sweet podcast. That's it for now. Uh, listen for our podcast on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, TuneIn, Google Play, Amazon, and Stitcher. Subscribe to us and please let us know what you think and interact with us on our Beetle News and Information page on Facebook where you can get the la latest Beetle News both ours and what's going on around the world all the time. Have a great day and please take care of yourself. Be seeing you. that one market fab what a shame.